Hey there folks, Mr. G here with another educational video. Today we're going to be finishing up our unit on ratios, rates, and percentages, and talking a little bit about percentages and how they relate to finance and financial literacy. Percentages appear quite commonly in uh, discussions around finance and financial literacy, which is really saying that percentages come, a lot when you're come up a lot when you're talking about money. In particular, they come up when we start talking about things like sales tax or discounts. In BC, there are two sales taxes, 5%, which goes to GST. This is for the federal government, so like the government of all of Canada. 5% of all sales, they take a tax on that. And then PST, that's provincial sales tax. Um, this one is 7%, and this goes to the government in British Columbia specifically. The other place that we see this is on discounts. So you might see in stores something like 30% off, or something like that, where they're say, saying that there's some discount or you get to take some amount of the percentage off. That's the other time that we oftentimes see percentages show up when we're talking about money. Now let's use a little bit about what we know about the sales tax as well as these discounts in combination with what we already know about percentages from our lessons before this and see if we can't solve some problems. Let's say the cost of a new iPhone is $699 before tax. What's the real cost of the iPhone after taxes if we assume that we're in BC? Now there's actually a couple different options for how we solve this problem. There's three really, and I'll walk through each of them to show you the different ways that we can calculate the answer. The first way is that we would figure out the GST, so that's the government sales tax from the federal government of all Canada, and figure out how much that is of our $699, and then we do the same thing for the PST. Once we figure out those two amounts, we add them together and then add it to the total cost. As we know, 5% of a number is the same as this times this, but we need to turn our percentage into a decimal. Once we do that, we can plug it into our calculator, and then we can do the same thing on the other side over here. Once we have these two amounts, we can add them together and add them to the total cost. And we'll get a final answer of $782.88. That's how much the iPhone would cost after tax. Now, personally, I find this way kind of slow, and you end up doing a lot of intermediate steps, writing down a lot of numbers, and the other two methods are a lot faster and involve fewer of these kind of intermediate steps. For our second method, we can recognize that the 5% and the 7% are both on our sales price, so we can just combine these percentages together. And now we can do 12% of $699, which gives us $83.88. Now we can add this to our original sales price and get our final answer, which, if you notice, matches our first method over here. This, I think, is a lot cleaner and a lot faster, but there's even one other method that I think is better than both of these. And that's to recognize that when we do taxes of 12%, this is 12% more than our original cost, which is the same as saying it's going to cost 112% of our original price. And this 112% comes from 100% plus 12%. And now what we can do is in one line calculate 1.12, which is 112% times 699, and get the same final answer here. But you'll notice this one had the smallest amount of work by quite a lot. There was only one calculation, we didn't have to add anything together, multiply one number by another, and we get our answer. If you're able to do the questions this way, I do think that this is probably the best way to do them, and will also help you in solving some of the harder problems as well. Another thing I want to note, for all of these questions, we're always assuming that we're rounding to two decimal places here, and that's what we do anytime that we're talking about money. We always round to two decimal places because that's where the cents are, that's the pennies, and that's the smallest denomination of money we ever think about. All right, here's a different question. One of the things that you might not know is that children's clothing is not subject to PST in British Columbia, so you only get charged GST. So this 7% PST isn't charged, only the 5% GST when it comes to children's clothing, along with a number of other items. So if a new family buys $70 worth of children's clothing at regular price, but the store has a promotion for 25% off, how much will they be charged at checkout? Which means that we also need to take into account not only this discount here, but also the GST. Just like our previous one, there are two different ways of doing this question. I'm going to walk through both of them. One thing that we definitely need to recognize when we're talking about these types of questions where we have 
promotions for a certain percent off, as well as GST, is that we always do the sales before we do the tax. So we're going to do this 25% off first, and then we charge GST afterwards. So if we wanted to first deal with this 25% off, remember, 25% off, that means 75% of the regular price, which as a decimal would be 0.75. So if we want 0.75 of $70, we would do 0.75 times $70 which gives us $52.50. So this is the cost before tax, but after this 25% off promotion. And this would be the number that we would be charging tax on. Now, like I showed you before, if we have tax, in this case only GST of 5%, this is the same as 105% of our price, right? When we charge an extra 5%, we get everything already plus an extra 5%, which is 105%. So to calculate that, we would do 1.05 times 52.50, multiply those two together, and we would get an answer of $55.13. That's how much you would get charged at checkout for your clothing items after the 25% off. The second way that we can do this a little bit faster is actually by doing a percent of a percent. This is something we talked about last time. And we can actually do this whole question in one step. Remember, 25% off is the same as 75% of the price, or 0.75. And 5% tax, that's the same as 105%, or 1.05. So if we want to figure out 105% of this 75%, we can use percent of a percent. This percent of a percent is the same as multiplying 1.05 times 0.75, which we could calculate out as 0.7875, and then we can take this and multiply it by our price of $70 originally, and we get our final sale price of $55.13. Now, if you really want to do this question extra fast, you could have actually just multiplied 1.05 times 0.75 times 70 right away. So that's like 105% of 75% of $70. And that would have gotten you this answer all in one step. But you don't have to do it that way. I think this is totally fine as well. All right, here's our next question. April found a great deal on a backpack for back to school. It's $125 regular price, but marked down 10% because it was from last year. And then the store has a promotion for an extra 25% off all the items in the school, in the store for back to school. What's the price of the backpack before tax? Now you might be thinking, oh, I'll just do 10% plus 25%. But remember, this 10% gets take off, taken off first and then an extra 25% afterwards. So really what we're doing is we're taking 10% off, then we're taking another 25% off of that. So we wouldn't be able to add these together. In fact, we would have to use percent of a percent to help us here. 10% off, that's like paying 90%, which is the same as 0 0.9, and 25% off, that's like 75%, 0 0.75. So together, what these would do is take off 75% of 90%. And that's being taken off of $125. So if we wanted to do this very similar to our last one here, but all in one step, we would do 0 0.75, so 75% of our backpack that was already marked off for 10%, so that's 0.9, times the original price of $125. If we punch all of that into our calculator, we would get $84.38. That is the 10% taken off here and the 25% taken off here. The reason we can't add these percentages together is that this 10% gets taken off first and then we get an extra 25% on whatever the new price is. So we have to do this 10% and this 25% separately. We can't add them together. We were able to do that with tax here because the 5% and the 7% were both on this sales price. Now we might be wondering, what's the actual percent discount? If it's not 10% plus 25%, what's the overall discount if we take off 10% then another 25%?
In this case, again, we're doing 75% of 90%, and this would tell us what percentage of the original product that we're actually paying for. So this would be 0 0.75 times 0 0.9 we would get an answer of 0.675, which is the same as 67.5%. So what that tells us is that that is the fraction or the percentage of the original price that we are actually paying. So now we need to go in reverse. If we're paying 67.5% of the original price, what's that discount? That's the same as saying, all right, we started at 100%, now we're down to 67.5%, What's this difference? If we punch that into our calculator, we'll get 32.5%. So 10%, then another 25% is the same as 32.5% discount if we combine those two percentages together. Alrighty, folks, four questions up on the screen here. Pause the video, grab a piece of paper, and try them for yourself. Then, in a moment, we'll go over the answers. All done? All right, let's go over the answers. For our first one here, we're told that the regular price is $1,300 on sale for 35% off, but then we also need to calculate how much she's paying, including tax. Now here we're gonna assume that she's in BC, which means that when we take 35% off, this is like paying for 65%, which is the same as 0.65, and then when we have taxes, it's 12% tax, which is the same as 112%, or 1.12. Now what we are doing for our final price is we're taking 112% of 65% of our original price of $1,300. This would be the sale, 65% of $1,300, but then we need to do an extra 112% of that to include tax. In terms of the calculation, this means that we can just do this, times this, times this. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get a final answer of $946.40 for the laptop. For this question here, a 30% discount, that's like 30% off, that's the same as paying 70%, or 0 0.7, and we're gonna do that twice. So another 30% off is another 70%, or 0 0.7. So what fraction of the original price are we actually paying? Well, we want 70% of 70%. That'll tell us what fraction of the original we're paying. So 0 0.7 times 0 0.7. And we get 49%. And remember, this is the percentage that we are paying. So we're only paying for 49% of the original price. So what does that mean as a discount? We started at 100%, we went down to 49%. What's this difference? 51%. So what we got overall was a 51% discount. By taking 30%, then another 30% off of that, that's the same as if we just started from the start and took off 51% on its own. Now we gotta think about which of these is a better deal. 10%, then another 30%, or just 40% off. Now, if we think about 10% and 30%, these add up to 40. But as we've seen in some of these examples, 30 and 30, they add up to 60, but that's not the same as what we get when we do 30%, then another 30%. So we've got to do these, this calculation and figure out what single percentage discount this actually works out to. So 10% off is the same as paying 90%. 30% off is the same as paying 70%. And if we want 10% of 30%, that's like 0 0.9 times 0 0.7, which is the same as 0 0.63 or 63%. Remember, that's the amount that we are paying. So what's our discount? Well, that would be like 100% minus 63%. So we get an answer of 37% discount for this part here. Now, is a 37% discount better or worse than a 40%? 37% is lower, which means we're getting less of the price taken off. So this 40% is a better deal. The intuition for why that is, when we take 10% off, right, now we're down to 90%. And when we take a fraction of this percentage right here, 
right? We're taking a smaller, we're taking this same 30% chunk off of a smaller number. So it's not the same as taking 30% off of our, our original price. This is taking 30% off of a smaller price. This is why when we have two smaller discounts that add up to a bigger discount, these smaller discounts are always worse. And we saw that in our previous example, 30% and 30% is worse than just 60% off right from the get-go. 30% and 30% is only 51% discount when we combine them. Just something to keep in mind when you have these sorts of things. Lastly, Howard paid $50.40 for new pairs of shoes after tax, and we wanna know the price of the shoes before tax. This one's a little bit tricky, and we haven't gone over a question like this yet. The way that we would solve it is, well, if we knew the price before tax, let's call that price question mark, right? That's something we don't know. What we do know is to calculate the price after tax, we would take that question mark and multiply it by 112%, because we know this tax is 12%, which means we would pay 112%, or 1.12 times, whatever our original price is. So whatever this price is, we'd multiply it by 1.12 to get an answer of $50.40. So what times 1.12 gives us $50.40 is the same as saying $50.40 divided by 1.12. And we can punch that into our calculator. And if you do, you'll get an answer of exactly $45. So his new pair of shoes cost 45 bucks. Pretty good deal for a pair of shoes. That's the end of our video here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you tech check Teams for all of the homework and any other activities or any other assignments I have you doing. And I'll see you all in the next video.